Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talent in Connecticut. And I'm pleased to have on a former Stafford football player, and I appreciate Coach Mazzone being able to help get this player on as he recently committed uh, to Franklin and Pierce. Will be the tight end uh, in the fall, but still has a couple more games left as far as with his Summers High School program, because Stafford is a combined program from multiple towns and such a co-op for people who may not know for football. But I'm pleased to have on Connor Marchi. Uh, congratulations on your commit, and I appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, it's awesome to be able to talk with, and I'm, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you're the first Stafford football player I've had on here. I know you're from Summers High School, but as far as the program, other than Coach Mazzone, who I've had on quite a bit, uh, it's awesome to, you know, to be able to have a player of your ilk as far as from the program because of what they have done over the course of many years. Um before we get into obviously yourself and you know you committing to Franklin and Pierce, kind of talk to me about just the the fact of uh, you know being around the co-op and with so many towns and every year it being so different. And also too, you had COVID in there as well. Yep. Honestly, to be honest, I loved it. Um, I mean, I grew up playing uh, Ellington Road Runners, which was also with Ellington and East Windsor, so I kind of got used to it at a pretty young age but I mean coach Mazzone was big on family and that's pretty much what it was we built a family there and whether it was working out in the summer or um, just the regular season we were tight um, and I'm glad to uh, have known a group of guys that were from a different town like that I could tell you and I was a big proponent of getting programs and also conferences more love right I remember the first year when football came back, I, I I said, even on my broadcast, I felt like the NVL didn't get a lot of love, which some of it was justified, especially after this past season, seeing how some things transpired, but, and also the Pequot as well, you know, because of there's so much talent. And I feel like because you guys, and not saying you guys is a bad thing, but because you kind of, you know, you, you know, you're kind of spread out a little bit, right? You've got Absolutely. Memorial up here, you've got you guys over here you know, and so on and so forth. Right. But seeing what, you know, the first year of football being back and seeing how many Pequot teams you had Rockville who played killingly in the final, right. A couple of years ago, you had Stafford who gave Cromwell Portland who won the championship a couple of years ago, probably one of their best games that year. I think it was 14, seven. If I remember coach Mazzone was telling me, um, you know, and you would remember that too. It's just one of those things where the Pequot deserves a lot of, you know, a lot of credit, it's just a good brand of football. I completely agree. I mean, some of the kids that we faced were unlike any athletes I've faced in typical club sports. I mean, um, Ellington, Rockville always has incredible athletes. Even uh, Cromwell, you mentioned, and Granby had some great athletes, too. Yep. Yeah. Granby with Coach Shortell and what they do. And I know their quarterback, I think, just committed to Maris. So again, yes. it goes back to kind of what you and I were talking about with teams and commits and whatnot. You know, it doesn't matter where you are. It's more so can you play? If you can play, they will find you. And even in Granby and the quiet corner, I know they call Killingly that. If you can play, scouts, baseball terms or whoever, coaches will find you. Absolutely. You know, I mean, look, they found you as far as for Franklin and Pierce, and now you'll be their future, you know, hopefully soon to be starting tight end. So that says a lot. No, I completely agree. And I mean, uh, Coach Mazzone actually made a, a great point of what you were saying early on in the season about how Stafford not being a very, um, I guess you could say popular town as far as the football organization goes, but you don't get a, a ton of, recognition as far as teams like like you said earlier and Sonia do but um he, he's 100 right um those who play and can play I completely agree they definitely got found so with you having an opportunity to play for the football team and have it be a co-op and then you go out because I know you play basketball too and then obviously Summers has their own program baseball has their own program how I don't want to say difficult but is it a little bit of like an adjustment to go from where you're playing with, with young men from different parts, different high schools. And then when you play basketball and baseball, you're kind of off to just the summer's high school thing. Does that make sense? 
No, 100%. And I don't think it was difficult at all because I've played basketball and baseball with these kids for a very, very long time. I've played um, rec with all the teammates that I had this year in basketball. And then with baseball, I've played 50, 70, whatever, you name it. I've played with that group of guys for a very, very long time. So it's definitely a little different. Um, but no, absolutely. It was definitely not difficult. So, you know, speaking of as far as the amount of games you played and just how long you've been playing with your, you know, your friends, your teammates, how awesome. And you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Summers last year was the first time they've been to a championship either ever or pretty close to that. How was that experience and just no, being known as one of the teams, if not the only team, and you'll tell me in a second, to get to a CIAC state championship game? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I believe it was the only team since sometime in the 1970s for baseball. Yeah, so it, it was it's been a long time. But um to go to touch back on what I was saying about uh playing with my buddies in the past, I mean, the parents, coaches, even us as players have known that last year was definitely gonna be our year to go and uh go and make a run. We had a great senior class with a bunch of leaders. And to be honest, it just all the pieces fell at the right time. We made a, a nice run at the end of the season, beat some teams and ended up against St. Paul. Was it almost as if, and, you know, when I think about teams that get to a championship, like prime example, you know, look at the Super Bowl, right, with the Eagles. Everybody, for the most part, was healthy. Nobody was severely hurt. I know Hertz was out for a game or two, and our Dallas Cowboys won them, you know, beat them in a shootout in Jerry yep. World. And I felt like that game was a little bit lucky, too, especially at the end. Um, but for the most part, they were healthy. And I'm sure you could speak to last year, great group of seniors, a lot of talent, but being healthy, but also hitting at the right time, right? Talk to me about kind of what made that season so spe uh, so special, rather. I mean, to be honest, I feel like it was a a lot of a a cooperative, um, I don't want to say decision, but almost like a group effort. Um, I feel like a lot of us were more motivated than we have been in the past, at least, uh, as far as making a run. But I would completely uh, agree with what you were saying about being healthy. We were all healthy. We, we were lucky enough to not deal with any injuries throughout the season we had. A lot of lively arms that could throw six, seven innings at a time. So we were set up in a great spot to go and win that uh, win that state championship, but didn't go our way. Now, I know this season's a little bit different. When you kind of make a run like that, you, you want to be able to repeat as far as making that deep run again. You guys still have an opportunity. There's still a couple games, I think, about what, six, five, six, something like that games left. You're yep. at five and nine right now need to get to eight in order to qualify and you still have an opportunity for that, but it kind of, it's, it's, it's getting tight. The room's closing in a little bit. It's getting to be um, crunch time. Yeah, exactly. So, and also too, unless you decide to want to try out for Frank, Franklin Pierce, which would, you know, would be epic if you did that as far as want to play on the baseball team, you only have potentially as of right now, six games left of your baseball career. Um, has that hit you at all yet? As far as the, with the games winding down and such? Yeah, it definitely has. Um, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that. My dad actually sent me a picture of me playing baseball. I think I was either two or three years old. But anyway, I looked at that picture for a while and was sort of reminiscing. But I complete. I definitely know what you're saying. It's definitely maybe it hasn't completely hit me yet, but uh, it definitely will once these games start ticking down. Well, maybe Summers can find a way to be able to squeeze out. And I'm sure with your help to try to just get to eight. I mean, you're at five right now. I don't have the schedule in front of me, but again, playing in the NCCC, it's always tough. You, you know, you got some good teams in there. So it's going to be a dogfight, as you said, till the very end. Absolutely. So when we look at, and we mentioned, you know, I mentioned Franklin Pierce quite a, you know, a number of times. Um, a lot of times when I think of, commits right and I thought a lot of players committed early usually there's like a signing period and such it's usually after the football season sometimes after the state tournament right so you know for teams that win a state championship then they've got their players committing it's like a double whammy but in a positive way because it's like it's, it's fantastic Definitely. But, but for you it, it kind of was a little bit farther than that it was after the new year after January after 
you know, Valentine's Day. You pushed it all the way into, I think, what, a week or two ago when you committed. Um, just talk to me about kind of the, the process with that and why it took you so long. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm just curious. No, definitely. Um, so I toured Franklin Pierce first, I want to say, sometime before the football season started, so sometime last summer. And this has been a spot I've been looking at for quite some time now. That was actually the first school I applied to and the first school I got accepted to. Um, and I mean, part of going into the decision was academics, of course. I'm trying to study environmental science and Franklin Pierce has a great environmental outdoors program. And that just kind of adds the icing on the cake. But I mean, not to mention their football program, I believe started up in 2019. And I just saw it as an opportunity to go and uh, go and play some ball. Well, you know what, too, it also is, and again, and I didn't even know that the football program just started. So that's awesome to hear. So it's still in the the rebuild, I, I shouldn't say rebuild, but still in the process of kind of getting the groundwork going, right? As Definitely. as uh, Coach Jenkins at Benel always says, brick by, you know, brick by brick. And Absolutely. I think that's kind of what the program is going with right now at Franklin and Pierce. Um, but I think it's, I think it's a great fit for you because you're coming from a program with so much structure. Obviously, you've got Mazone in your pocket if you have any questions you want to ask him. And I'm sure he he knows a thing or two about college football as well. Oh, yeah. So I think having that as your lifeline, but also to bringing over what you've instilled four plus five, six plus years with the program and so on and so forth, that could really help FP a lot. What says you? Absolutely. I mean, to be honest, I think Franklin Pierce is in a great spot. Um I mean, with the program still being new, I can definitely see where you're coming from as far as like the building phase. But I think uh, within a couple of years now, I think we'll be looking at a great team. 100%. And you'll have an opportunity to be able to play tight end for them. And as we know, offense is very prolific. I mean, I feel like offense is kind of the the new wave. And it's it really so much hasn't been the new wave, but it's something that's really being pushed forward as far as teams. It seems like everybody even at the high school level, you know, teams are able to score at such a high clip. But I know for Stafford, you guys were a little bit different, just to kind of backtrack for a second. You guys could score, but you guys were kind of that old style smash mouth, three yards in a cloud of dust. We're going to punch you in the face and keep punching you. And then if you punch us, we're going to punch you five times harder. Yes, absolutely. I mean, to be honest, I really, I loved the way we, uh, the way we ran the ball for Stafford. I mean, Um, My quarterback, Zach Donovan, our favorite play was quarterback blast. And I mean, it worked, it worked like a charm. So he got a lot of carries and he threw the ball very, very well. Um, And I thought it was just a great time, but overall, I mean, I completely, uh, I definitely agree with what you're saying about the smash mouth type of type of strategy. So what was Coach Mazzone's favorite play? What, what what play call was either said by him or the OC where he got giddy and he started to get really excited? What play was that? I would say any well-blocked run scheme, he would get absolutely ecstatic. Um, however, I feel like the team or the the play that he really would like salivate over was probably just a great textbook quarterback blast or a, a running back trap play. Well, I, see, something tells me, and I'm sure he'll text me when he watches this after, but I think he was an offensive lineman when he played. Yes. Yep. So why am I not surprised when it's a trap play or a counter or your play was the blast where if I'm here in blast, if I'm an offensive lineman, I'm thinking, okay, let me blast you into the secondary. Something tells me that that kind of play could really get an offensive lineman and Coach Mazzone very happy. 100 percent and i mean coach mazone was our offensive line coach and he has been for a very long time but he you could tell he's very very passionate about it and i mean times in practice we would run and run the same play over again until it was blocked to his his way so i'm glad we did that too because it ended up paying off later now is there is there any sort of memories that you will carry with you when you go to fp in the fall regardless it could be basketball it could be baseball which is not over yet obviously football ended for you um is there any sort of memories that you will carry with you when you head off to college in the fall 
100%. And I, I think it'll come from each sport and just life in general. Um, but to touch more on the football side, I just, I would say the best memory that I've had was blowing out Rockville at home, not this year, but last year, it, I believe 48 to seven with uh, our quarterback, Mark McLaughlin. I, that was a great time. I'll never forget that game. Yeah, Mazzone mentioned, and he gave me some of the games that you did really well. That Rockville game was one of them. You had a couple, I think, touchdowns, didn't you? I, I think I, I believe I had one touchdown. Yeah. So, so is there any other? You know, since we already mentioned football, is there a basketball game and now baseball game that you will also not forget as well? I would say the best basketball game that I've played is the one I probably wouldn't forget, um, just because I, I'm not sure if Mazzone had made it um known for you but I had fractured my clavicle midway through the season and I actually lost a bunch of basketball time from that so I believe I played 10 out of the 20 regular season basketball games and um obviously playing 10 games in a season I'm still coming into my win pretty late but uh we made a nice little playoff run and we knocked off a supposed state uh championship favorite it was Wimogo so I believe I had 18 points against Wamogo. So Mazone did tell me that you broke your your clavicle. I think it was your the the collarbone. I think yep. what three games in or three games left of the season, something like that. Yeah, it was three games less left of the season on senior night, which uh oh, was that's unfortunate. A, that's a bummer. That's an awful yeah. senior night. Yeah, it wasn't a great one, especially ending it with a loss. I mean, mm-hmm. if we got a W, maybe it wouldn't hurt so bad, but you know. But at least you were able to play some games for basketball and you were a big part of the what and again I apologize for basketball I don't have it in front of me but it sounds like you guys made a little bit of a run as far as at least finishing strong for your senior year too. Absolutely um I think a lot of went into basketball was coming together at the right time we Mm -hmm. finished the season 11 and 9 and nobody really thought of us as making a playoff run or a team that would make any type of run especially against two teams that beat us early in the season Mm -hmm. so the first round of the playoffs we had canton who we lost to twice in the regular season they gave us a tough two tough games and then we came right back with a tough one that was at their place um low scoring game i think it was somewhere in the 50s to somewhere in the 40s but we're a pretty good defense or we were a pretty good defensive team Mm -hmm. um but then again, we uh, lost to Wamogo last game of the regular season, and it felt good to beat them at their place in the you state. Know, the NCCC, when you play teams, right? When you play them for a third time, I've always believed it's hard. It's hard to beat a team three times. So, and it sounds like Canton beat you twice, right? Yep. So then you play them for that third time in the playoff. That was Division what? Division four? Division five? Yep, Division four. Division four. Okay, so. You face him again, and then it becomes a different case. Absolutely. Because my broadcast partner always mentioned how, you know, and he's been hearing it for years, how it's hard to beat a team three times. So right there is proof of it, you know, in the pudding. I so. completely agree. But hey, Connor, I really appreciate you coming on. A lot of fun being able to talk with you. Best of luck as far as with the remaining five or six games that you have left. Hopefully Summers can get a little bit of a push and just qualify for the playoff and you never know. Just get in and then just, I mean, look at the Lakers. They were terrible exactly. all year and now they're five games away from winning an NBA Finals. Yep. Who would get? I know, exactly. Or at least getting to a championship, not winning the Finals, but getting there. But Absolutely. Hey, uh, congratulations on going to Franklin and Pierce and uh, best of luck, Connor. Thank you very much and have a great night, man. Thanks for having me on. Always, anytime. Now, wrap things up here on the CT Sports Talent Show. So, until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm a journey find them all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and be well.